Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Let's give a few minutes for everyone to join, and we will start. So one more minute and we will start. All right, so whoever uh, make it on time, made it on time, uh, whoever not will uh, watch us on the on the, our YouTube channel and uh, um, we'll fetch up. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Mark, Mark Rachin. I'm a publishing team leader here at Supersonic, basically leading a team of, of super potential, super talented PMs making these games, making your games a hit. And uh, in this Super Monday session, we will be covering the hybrid casual, uh, this big word, hyper casual, how much, how, how much time it has been said and, and covered and, and spoken about uh, for the last few months. And, and uh, now we want to share with you a bit of our uh, insights about our opinion, about our position, perspective. So let's talk about what, why, and how hybrid casual. So um, what's on the agenda? We're gonna talk about the background. We're gonna talk really, really shortly about what led to the situation where we have this new genre coming up. We will try to understand what is hyper casual, hybrid casual, sorry. Uh, we will try to give you some tips, maybe to help you to ideate and, and bring this, uh, this uh, uh, new hit uh, to the top charts. Uh, and we're gonna share, of course, our approach, supersonic, what we do and how we tackle the hybrid casual here at supersonic. And eventually we're gonna keep some uh, some time for your Q and A's. Uh, please uh, pop your questions here in the chat and I will try to cover all of them, but hopefully hopefully I will, I will be able to make it <laughs> in time. Let's start. So uh, macroeconomics, all right. So it's not a secret, the world is suffering. The world is, is bleeding, the macroeconomics, the, the, the stock exchange, the banks, et cetera. And we, as an industry, as a market, we are not uh, immune to that. So basically, macroeconomics impacting us as well. And the gaming industry, and it's really important to, 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 to note, it's not hyper casual. It's the whole gaming industry. Um, the main factor that we can see, the main um, criteria that we can, can, can narrow down and can, can identify as a, as a problematic one is the lower ACPMs. Lower ACPMs means that the advertisers put less money in the advertisement and willing to pay less money 
for this uh, process means that the money that we do from each impression is lower, right? Lower money per impression makes lower revenue, right? So cumulatively, the number of impressions that we show during the lifetime of the game uh, brings us lower revenue. And this reality brings us to the, to the situation where we need to, to think what we do, all right? What is the new request? What is the new need of the market? Uh, it's saying need stronger in-game and it's eventually the, the direction and we will be talking and covering it in a second. So this desired and this really, really serious question is hyper casual dead. So I would die to see your faces and your, your, your fingers going up and, and screaming, no, yes, no, yes. But unfortunately it's, it's, it's a online streaming, uh, but I would doubt it's no. It's no, it's not dying, it's here to stay. And the only thing I can say about hyper casual is that it's not, it's not that, it's just leveling up. It becoming smarter, it becoming better, it becoming stronger. So uh, I, I can give like this example of, of, uh, of my iPhone, which is iPhone 14. And I had this iPhone three a few years ago. I had the same iPhone, it's, it's the same iPhone, it's the same smartphone, but you know, leveled up a bit. Cool, so what is hybrid casual? Uh, again, it's a really, 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 uh, I would say deep uh, niche. We can go and elaborate and talk and discuss and bring examples. And my goal here is to summarize and to bring it to you in the most appealing, in the most understandable way. So I just bring it as a one sentence, hopefully understandable, which is hybrid casual is like hyper casual games are based on simplified, snickable and marketable core gameplay means those games are simple, they are still snackable, you can see the creative, you can understand what's going on, you can understand what is the goal, and the marketable means that they are appealing to the mass audiences, which is a really, really important point, and we're going to talk about it a bit, a, bit for, uh, a bit later. But those games are offering something new to the player. While hyper casual games, they are simple, they are, they are, they are minimal, they are, they, they are like focusing on one major aspect of the game, the core mechanic, the core goal, and this is all about hybrid casual games offers players an additional engagement layers to create visual gaming experience, which eventually equal to, to a new monetization models, uh, blended monetization formats. If we will uh, elaborate, will be interstitial, IAP, and of course, Arvis. Arvis is the main, is the main uh, point that we're gonna be uh, focusing on. And if I'll put it in like one formula, we can say that hyper casual core means that those simple, snackable, marketable gameplays, understandable, mass appealing, all right, plus casual mid core meta layer. And here I mean that it gives the player the ability to progress, it gives the player the ability to express himself, to be hooked, to be engaged with the game, to be actually able to progress and feel how he is progressing in the game. Uh, all those coming together with the blended monetization, which is not relying, uh, relying only on the interstitials, but has this RV engagement factor, has this IP, and all these three components make together the hybrid casual genre. Uh, again, it's something that we could go and, uh, and dive much deeper and uh, only in, in, in terms of uh, efficiency and clarity, we will go, uh, we will, we'll keep going. And uh, please ask your questions if you have some. Um, trying to visualize, trying to simplify this, 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 new, um, this new direction. Let's see the really, really, really common uh, subgenre um, in hyper casual, which is puzzles, right? And uh, we have like one picture on the left, you have the, the game of art puzzle connect, which is a game um, introducing pretty, pretty famous and pretty broad concept of an image. And you have like the bank of items, which you apply uh, on the, on the picture and basically creating this puzzle, um, really nice concept, again, broadly uh, used in several games and hyper casual game, typical hyper casual game has been there for a long, long time. Simple control, clear goals, and how these exact simple controls, this exact simple clear goal, and this exact main core gameplay, which is puzzle, is 
transformed into hybrid casual by adding a new additional layer of mechanics, right? So we have this emerging mechanics in the bottom of the, uh, of the game of uh, Merge Art Puzzle by Voodoo. Um, a completely different feeling, a completely different experience with the same game, all right? Uh, on the right side of the of the of the GIF, you can see the UI screen where you actually can see and understand that there is a, like a level progression. You have some buttons, you have some events, you have an energy system. Basically, all these elements of the core gameplay, which is uh, merging and applying the, the puzzle, basically could be transformed into the progression uh, monetization uh, layer uh, done really really well. Another example is Mo, uh, Mo My, My Loan by Azure Games, which is a um, clear SMR game, you know, like appealing to definitely to the broad, broad audience, uh, you know, giving, giving the, the, the players this amazing feeling of, of SMR working, worked, working, and will be working probably for a long, long time. Um, and on the right side, we have the Stone Grass game by Type to Play. Uh, free play, basically having the same core gameplay, the same grass mowing, and, and eventually uh, offering the players an additional layers of progress. So instead only cutting grass and having this SMR feeling, you have to upgrade your car, you have to collect the money, and you have by that an additional placements to RV engagement, right? To sell this hybrid. So I stuck and I want to progress, what I do, if I have no money, have no resources, I watch RV. So basically, if I would say uh, how it could be transformed and how it could be described, these two games uh, in, as, as hybrid casual games is basically games that allowing user to pay with his time for, for, for advertisements. RV is costing much more. And uh, basically by creating the hook, by creating the engagement, we uh, creating this new room for RV usage RV rate. Um, how you can come up with the how we came up with the new hybrid casual heat. So there's a lot of uh, ways, there's a lot of suggestions, a lot of tips we can give and I will try to be uh, quick as possible and uh, giving just some of them. Um, but before that I want to make sure that the core, the essential root, the essential core of your ideation should consists these two aspects, three aspects. So game vision, you need to visionize your game. You need to understand not only how the game will be look on the creative uh, level. It's not only how the game will be will be marketable and, and you know, like just bringing the, 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 the users and that's it. We want to see how the game will be look in three, four, five iterations. We want to see how the game will be look in the uh, in the global launch, right? What will be the, the, the progression? What will be the goal or the goals? Basically, if you're talking about the uh, uh, strong grass, so we have like, the, the goal of cutting grass, the goal of collecting money, the goal of upgrading your car, right? So all these uh, elements should be uh, ideated and, and taken into the consideration when, while only planning the game. Game POC, proof of concept, is something that we definitely want to, to see um, uh, presenting in our ideation is we want to rely on something that works, something that has been tested, something that, that we can see in top charts and trying to pivot it maybe. Now pivoting is not that you're pivoting the trends, but pivoting maybe your, 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 your last game. So you have like this game, which has like really, really low CPI, but you couldn't like win the, 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 the in-game metrics. Think how you could take this uh, puzzle and what could be the additional layer, additional mechanic that you can add into this game in, may, in order to make it uh, um, a hybrid, all right? Selling points, so again, so if before uh, with Hyper Casual, you would mostly be relying on interstitials, trying to minimize the levels just to be able to squeeze in the interstitials uh, every 20, 30 seconds. Uh, now we, we need and we should think of how and what will be sold in our game. Sold means that I'm, as a player, I'm willing to go and pay. Now, payment could be money, it could be time. I think that time is much more expensive, but again, I want to make, create this hook where the player is willing and he actually need and willing to pay with his time for the RV engagement. RV engagement usually be, will be uh, high when the, RV is linked to progression, 
all right? When I need to progress, I need to do something, I need to open something, uh, I'm stuck, you know, the progression is slow. So basically all these thoughts should be present in your ideation process. Meta, which was pretty mild uh, impact on the hyper casual side now become pretty strong and pretty dominant in the hybrid casual. We want to create this meta game that will allow and will engage with the core, man, uh, core gameplay enriching this experience, right? Allowing the user to go and maybe to, to uplift, upgrade his resources in order to progress in the main core, in the core gameplay. So taking all this stuff into consideration, we need to start to, start to think about the games. Uh, what, what would be the concept? So the first, and I think this is the most important uh, tip I can give you is basically to try and to try to focus on the mechanic. Mechanic always was, it's still, and it will be the main factor that brings and holds the players in the, in the game. Brings mean that the core mechanic, right, the something that is really, really the core gameplay will be the marketable, right? Will be the, the creative that will talk to the, to the mass audience and will bring them for like, for the, for a small CPI. But on the other hand, it will keep them in the game allowing them to replay the game, right? So we have on the right side, the basketball by, uh, basketball by Supersonic and newer games, which has this, the power of PvP. PvP is always like a, an engagement game. It's not about the mechanic. It's about like playing with opponent and trying to beat them better and better and better and better again, right? So you have the, the, the mechanic and you have the PvP factor, which together makes the, the strong, um, the strong uh, in-game metrics. On the left side, we have the merge miners, game merging is always well always always working uh at least uh supposed to work right in the merging an emerging mechanic you have the the option to hook the player by what will be the next item i will be like i will be discovering right so merge emerge emerge and and basically you got like this maximum you know like uh, emerged uh, uh uh layers and like what will be the next one how the next weapon will be looking like all right, uh, 2048, you know, that this concept of the game is basically playing with the same, uh, uh, with the same um, elements. Uh, you always want to reach the higher number. Um, level progression, all right. Levels is something that is crucial right here. If going back to hyper casual where we have this 20, 30 seconds levels in runners, which we were like, you know, minimizing and trying to balance them with the interstitials, uh, and it has like a really, really big, big story. Now, by having the ability to engage with player on a monetization, on a monetization layer on Arvis means that we could compromise Arvis with interstitial. We should aim to create longer levels that will create the hook, that will create the engagement with the game. All right, I have some strategy that I'm actually building right now. So on the left side, we have Traffic Jam. I recently uh, launched the game. Amazing one, please go and download it. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be organic, so it's uh, awesome for us. Uh, you go and you actually basically you trying to develop and enlarge your city and the visual effect where you zoom it out and you see the like oh there's something like under the skies maybe like I need to progress and I need to play this level to the end. Flexi ring amazing puzzle game which always opens and and progress uh, upwards. Uh, so you play it and basically basket uh, crusher, bucket crusher as well. Games that actually like, you know, you, you play like four, three minutes and you got to the failing moment. When you use the RV just to, to revive yourself. Ah, it's like so, so sad to, to lose these three minutes that you actually just played around. Cool. So another tip I can give you is the uh, assembly customization. Give the player the ability to express himself. Give the player the ability to build his strategy and to impact the game. Basically, uh, when player engaging with our game, with he's playing our game, uh, most of the components, most of the game is, is pre-built, is preset for him, right? So he's just navigating these obstacles. Element of customization, assembly, right? Brings the player the feeling, right? I actually, I'm responsible for my winning. It's not the game that sent me like this, this strong boss. And I will be always, aiming, willing to improve myself, to not beat only the level, but beat myself from the previous time. So it's kind of a, a, a tactic and, 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 and um, um, an approach basically to, um, to engage the player only to beat him with himself and not the game, right? To progress with himself. Uh, always work, mostly, usually it works, right? Cool. 
supersonic approach. So belong that uh, alongside that we try and we do our best to guide you guys uh, through the ideation process to make sure that you have the best tools, the best uh, the best um, ideas, at least the best ground for ideas for your games. We still believe that there's three three essential components uh, in making every game not only a good concept and not only a good iteration, but actually in a whole to make it a great hit. Ideation and planning, we spoke about it. So you need to plan, you need to think forward, you need to understand how your game will be look like uh, at the end in the global launch. Um, it's, it comes to RV, you need to understand like what will be the selling points. So we cover that. Tools and analysis. So making like making it like maybe in a different proposition, uh, say it in a different way. So if in hyper casual, we have like this minimal um, metrics that has been required, you know, the, the retention playtime, and that's it. Uh, so now we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into the metrics. We want to understand the behavior of a user. Five minutes level. You know, like people, X people start, Y uh, finished. What happened in the middle? Who was engaged with the RV? Does my RV help the player to, to, to progress? So having reliable, sufficient tools and ability to analyze the data that these tools provide and produce it's an essential, essential part to make good and right decisions. Expertise in methodology. Uh, so if I'll go again and I'll try to compare to the hyper casual. So if you have like this strong, strong understanding of how runners should look like 20 seconds uh, level and you know, like interstitial level, uh, here we want to make sure that we cover and we offer an expertise, offer the knowledge for something that's pretty fresh in the market. All right, uh, hybrid casual, as I say, it's like eight, nine months old uh, as, as, a, like, as a kind of uh, strong genre in our, in, in our direction. Uh, having exper expert, and this guy like here, like, that, uh, in, in, like in the left down corner is uh, one of our PMs. We're actually here to help you and to understand, uh, to understand and to guide you through the, his experience and through his, his methodology to help you to pr 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 proceed efficiently. Oh. Testing, um, yeah, basically testing was pretty simple and pretty intuitive and pretty um, mm, preset, right? We know, we knew what we need to see, we knew what, where we need to, to, to focus, we knew what the metrics are counts. Now we have this vast metrics uh, bouquet, right? Which basically creates the whole uh, engagement, uh, engaging, um, experience of the game, but it's not only just to analyze and understand your metrics, right? For example, fail rate. Uh, classically, you know, historically, um, fail rate is not something that is so common in hypercasual. We in hypercasual we want to reward, we want to make our users, you know, this snackable, you know, like in, in the metro playing five, three minutes, think that he is the best uh, runner among all. Uh, but in hybrid casual, when we're talking about engagement, when we're talking about uh, the ability to create uh, real progression feeling in the game, fail rate may play a really, really positive uh, role in the development of the game. But as I said before, metrics are not only the, the not the only component you want to look at. You want to compare them with the benchmarks, all right? So if we have benchmarks for hyper casual and everything is known, here again something that is pretty pretty fresh, and having us having our PMs or having your PM uh, guiding you, showing you right, look, your game has the fail rate X compared to our benchmarks, compared to the games we tested and we saw in our platform, like dozens of them, it's low, it's high, it's good, it's bad. All these should be come together, and all, every uh, all these. These two walls of metrics and benchmarks are working together in order to make right and, and, and uh, right decisions towards your iterations. And iterations, of course, iterations. So basically having the tools, having the data, having the reliable tools, right? Have the reliable data, which is not collected like through from uh, um, several platforms and several tools. You want to have them um, reliable. This is the thing that the, 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 the main and the most important uh, word here, the most um, uh, important term, reliability. You want you, your data to be real, to represent the real behavior of your users. Here we can see basically the, uh, the level churn um, uh, funnel uh, generated by our wisdom 
SDK in our platform, which is transparent and reflected to you. So you go by yourself and, and uh, analyze um, um, the behavior of your users. Sticking to the vision of the game is something that should be presented over there. So as we planned a while ago, we, 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 we planned this, this concept. Now we want these ideas and these plans to be realized within our game. And we want to see like if the numbers, if the metrics we see here in the funnel are meeting our expectations. Um, a lot of other uh, metrics like RV engagement, everything is counts, all right? Uh, and evaluating these metrics in the right way is really, really important. And again, that is the king always was still and will be. Uh, marketability is part of the decision-making. So we not we cannot allow ourselves only focus on the nice and the great in-game metrics. We always want to see how this game is marketable, how the game is transformed into marketable and playable game into scalable game, right? So the tool that we um, that we uh, uh, introduced to the market a um, few months ago, I would say, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is a really, really sufficient and, and sophisticated tool, uh, AI. I know it's, it's working well, uh, the, the word. So basically taking all these uh, components, creating the, the marketability, which is different uh, sources of testing, which is the audience, which is the placements, which is the, the age and all these coming together, money spent, impression showed, generated into one simple metric, which is a number, which is a capability score, allowing us, allowing you to understand what will be the scalability, the potential scalability of your game, compared to the in-game metrics. Uh, and as, um, as a benchmark, I know that you guys uh, are pretty looking for it. You know, I, I know that it's a really, really important uh, factor in, in understanding like how you progress and where you should aim for. So again, as I say, hyper-casual isn't that. Hyper-casual is here. And we still see games with a low CPI uh, and you know with the kind of a hyper-casual core and it's okay, it's a good, it's fine, we, we love it. And basically we know how to balance uh, our requirements, our benchmarks compared to marketability score. Good marketability means ability to scale your game uh, easily and, 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 and for, for uh, lower prices allows us to kind of compromise, uh, so compromise on the benchmark, on the in-game benchmarks while we know that there is some really, really, really good in-game metrics that allows us to compromise the flexibility score to the lower side. It's everything about flexibility. It's everything about being guided and understanding what is the core and what is the, um, what is the goal basically for ourselves. And if I'll try to summarize this one, the goal of ours is make sure that the developer, that the studio working on the game won't spend his time. There is no, um, there's no reason to spend time for something that will be just, you know, like uh, blinding you from specific uh, perspective. You know, I have like strong in-game or I have like a really good marketability. Everything should come and work together. Um, advice, uh, you are a self serve PM. Advice, your PM, uh, definitely a, a place to, to elaborate on. And uh, as, it, uh, as it comes to the end, uh, let's try to to take some takeaways, right? So hyper casual is here to stay. No one died, everyone is alive, everything is good. We still love hyper casual, we still work there and we believe that there is a huge room for hyper casual to be published, to be scaled, to be monetized and to bring great uh, profit and fame to the studio. Uh, the only thing I can say here is like my iPhone become from three to 14, uh, hyper casual evolving as well, he's leveling a lot. And, and we do see uh, how a bit deeper thought required over there. Most of the hyper casual subgenres can be turned into hybrid casual games. Say it again, uh, say it before. And I show you like a good example of ASMR games, which has like a really, really big presence uh, in the top charts uh, a few years ago. Uh, and, and, and it looks like, right, how can I take the SMR game and turn it into hybrid? So you can, it's only about to find the right blend, not an monetization, the right blend in the layers of the gameplay, how the meta, how the progression, how the upgrades working together and basically making your core gameplay, which is the SMR feeling of cutting grass, for example, is unfazed. 
in phase in phase right in phase right. doesn't matter uh, basically um it's a really it's, it's a really really is uh, important note here uh before developing the concept visualize it we know that hybrid casual games take longer time frames to to develop longer iteration phases uh time equal money and time is the most valuable important resource we have as, as human beings don't waste it for nothing try to think ahead ask the right ask the right questions before you go in and develop and spending these weeks for for nothing additional layers in the game equal higher engagement equal more opportunities to increase otv it doesn't matter that if you know it doesn't mean that now you're adding like 17 mechanics and 35 uh, layers of, of meta game uh, you have like you know like this 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 total number of, of opportunities now it's really important that to see how the meta how the the additional core um, the goals work in and and elaborate one with each other reading one game um cpi um less than otv golden rule for every game ever all right it's something that has been there here and will be there uh the the main uh, takeaway here is that we need to understand that we're not looking for specific niche audiences we still as hyper casual we are appealing and we want to bring as many users as possible kids elders you know america india whatever it is we want to see our game scaled and, uh, and and appealing to as many people as possible deeper analysis smarter decisions for sure it again it's not something new but uh, especially in the era of hybrid casual you want to make sure that you are analysis made right sufficiently and reliable all right and um basically uh this is it i can tell you that we see a long of a, a lot of room to elaborate to talk more to you to explain to 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 present you some ideas and, and insights and uh, i believe our marketing team the amazing team will take it further and we will be having uh, more uh super mondays and sessions on this regard uh if you have suggestions please pop it up and uh, basically, this is it for the presentation itself. Uh, now we're going to have some time for Q&A. Uh, and just give me one second to bring it uh, to my screen. Cool. So um, I have some uh, a list of some uh, questions. And I will try to refer to each of one of them. Retention day one is higher than 50 percent has a marketability score of what why no why not five so basically one to five is basically scale all right one is hard marketability it's it's low marketability i would say right so high cpi if i will translate it into so if one is high cpi five is low cpi low cpi requires higher in-game metrics Hope it's answers. Uh, how is hybrid casual different from idle arcades? So it's not. Uh, now we're talking about genre and about subgenre. So hybrid casual is basically a genre, like casual, like midcore, like uh, like uh, hardcore. While idle arcades, idle clickers, runners, there are subgenre under this genre. Uh, I know the taxonomy. It's uh, it's not the strongest part of hyper casual uh, market. Uh, and by the way, we are working like on a really, really, really nice, deeply uh, analyzed and 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 um, mm, mm, sufficient uh, taxonomy, uh, trying to educate and trying to under, uh, explain how we see these terms uh, and creating like some um, unified and 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 um, mm, joint field, which will allow us to express ourselves in terms of terminology. Uh, and we understand one each other, go to our knowledge center, which uh, which is amazing. What suggestions you have to turn a runner game into the hybrid casual? What kind of extra mechanics can be added? Amazing. So basically, um, shot factory, right? Uh, it's kind of a runner game, right? So basically, you assemble your your weapon, and you go and you run. You basically use the weapon you just assembled. Use it in the in the in the in the, in the core gameplay. Uh, we have this game of Rolik. I cannot remember the name, which uh, has uh, um, the cleaning um, uh, the cleaning uh, uh, element. You know, like the SMR element. 
uh, which has like several layers in the runner itself. So basically now, first the first layer you upgrade and you kind of like reco recover uh, weapons, then you use them and then you use them in, in a different way. So basically imagine to yourself how you could use different elements uh, and different layers. It could be different screen. It could be something within the level itself that could enlarge and emphasize and, and, and basically um, to leverage your core gameplay, which is the runner. Uh, I think the shot factor um, is a great example. Uh, I'm not sure, by the, by the way, it's like, a, it, it has like this RV engagement, et cetera. It's a pretty, pretty old game, but as an approach, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. Um, what suggestions you have to turn a runner game? I'm oh, sorry, we have that. Why the marketability score of a game with day one 50 was lower than a game with day one 38? It's not basically all right. So let me let me let me go here. So basically, what we have here is one aspect of the game: marketability. You try count it as a CPI. CPI with a score of five is a low CPI. Low CPI means that I have an ability and have an option as a company, as a publisher, to scale the game easily, to buy cheap users. Cheap users are uh, something that basically requires me, all right? The, I, I spend 10, 10 cents CPI, 10 cents for user acquisition. And with this 10, with this cost, all I need is 15 cents, all right? LTV. 15 cents LTV is, is uh, achievable by lower in-game metrics, right? So this is a two different, two separate components of the whole picture. The one shows what is my CPI and the other shows what benchmarks, what KPIs I need for the in-game to be able to scale and test this game uh, and basically to bring it to the, uh, as, as a global launch. Um, how much, does CPI um, affect hybrid casual? Of course, it's effect. <laughs> of course, it, it, it's 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 really it's a really it's a really um, important questions question because as I say uh, as a as a as a takeaway, mass audiences, right? So basically, you know, we have games like from the casual market, uh, which could be you know in a way translated and 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 maybe understood as a hybrid casual games, which CPI are four dollars. This is not the goal. CPI of all dollars means that it's appealing for the really, really, really niche specific group of audiences with audience targeting. We talking about mass audience appealing means that we're looking for the lower CPI possible for our games, all right? I can tell you that, that, uh, that the CPIs for hybrid casual games are not way higher than the CPIs for the classic hyper casual games with this SMR feelings and with these puzzles, something that we used to uh, from like, let's say last year, right? So basically um, saying that something is more important and less important is not right. The idea is to bring cheaper users and make better, stronger in-game metrics. Basically, basically this is the formula. Um, does it require a big team to develop a hybrid casual game? It depends on you, all right? So I would say that uh, we have developers, solo developers that are creating amazing, high-end, super polished, sufficient, sufficient and smart idle arcade games because they're capable of, and there are some studios that, 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 that uh, split these responsibilities and split these uh, action items, let's say, for development in, in for like three three uh, team members. One do art, one do balancing, another do uh, do game design. It really, really depends not on the team. It depends on the quality and the deliveries of yours, right? So don't cap yourself in, ah, hybrid casual needs for, for uh, people a team. It's mostly about what you able to deliver uh, within this team. Uh, I can tell you that eventually, all right? Naturally, that, that hybrid casual games, they are longer to develop. They require much more, uh, I wouldn't say much more, but they have uh, they, they require some more efforts and more abilities, knowledge, expertise in different directions like game design, art, uh, balancing economy. Uh, and, and this is something that, that could create the need in additional team members, but definitely not must. 
Um, do you guys think arcade idle games are the main genre for hybrid casual? No, I clearly don't think so. I, I think that uh, um, games that basically able to bring um, this sufficient blend uh, of monetization by creating this uh, high LTV, all right? This is uh, this is the main genre. Means I don't want to say that idle arcades. This is the main genre, and we should focus there because the room is so huge. All right, I just showed before uh, how basically uh, puzzle was turned into into merge into merge uh, into merge game. Uh, clearly, we can see that idle arcades are, are, are like a lot of concepts. Many concepts as are 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 um, are um, uh, developed and published like. In, in the store, all right, published, I mean, not published by publisher, but by, by, by uploaded to the store. Uh, and it feels, it looks like kind of a um, strong niche to go to. Um, I would definitely say that you should not cut yourself. And if your expertise is puzzles and if your expertise are, it's, are, are runners, are uh, um, ASMR games, try to do and, 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 and focus where you where you're good. Try to bring your best best ability, your strongest uh, abilities in game development, and leverage them and, and shift them into the hybrid. Not saying, all right, I need to make idle and I'll do, do idols, although I don't have any idea how to, how to do it. Um, as you have mentioned, CPI lower than LTV, but it look at the reports have been published regarding hypercasual, the CPI has drastically increased. How to decide that it's the right time for hypercasual? Um, as you have mentioned CPI, so reports have been published regarding hypercasual. The CPI has drastically increased. Uh, first note, it hasn't drastically increased. It's increased, it decreased, increased, decreased, and this is the market. So we still in our platform, in our platform, in, in, in our portfolio, we see CPI such as 20 cents and something that it's not really uh, uncommon or surprising. We definitely see concepts um, that, that hitting this, uh, uh, these benchmarks. Uh, and how to decide that it's uh, the right time of hypercasual. Um, it's always the right time for hypercasual. Like, I mean, like, why, why not? Like, if we have an ability to deliver really low CPI by creating not an idle arcade or a hybrid arcade metrics, which are 50 and above, this is counts. It's not about time for hypercasual or time for hybrid casual. It's about the ability to create profitable game. Where, in what direction, it's up to you with the help of us. And it, like in a said it several times, hyper casual isn't dead. It's still here to stay. And it's really, really important to understand that focusing your abilities and focusing your, uh, your talent on hyper casual, if you are so good at there, you should not drop the hyper and but you should think how and what will make your game uh, good enough and strong enough to, to be profitable. So this is really, really important uh, to note. And the last one question, because we really, really run out of time. And again, I will remind you that we have our uh, uh, Instagram, we have our LinkedIn, we have our, uh, we have everything. Uh, have, like, we, we present in, in, any, in any possible media. Put your questions over there, send them over there. We will try to refer uh, we will try to answer as soon as possible and, and make uh, and bring much more uh, uh, clarity um, um, to you. Uh, I see a lot of questions, so probably it's a really, really engaging uh, uh, topic. Um, don't hesitate. Please ask us. So how the UA videos for a hybrid casual is going to change from a hyper casual games? Uh, I will put it in the contra, all right? Uh, so I'm a, as, a, as a hyper casual uh, player, um, but not only, and I play casual games as well. Uh, so Facebook knows to target me <laughs> really, really efficiently. So every second ad I see is about games. You can see how casual games basically decreasing and degrading to hybrid slash hyper casual creatives. So you have like really, really serious games. I don't want like to name, uh, to, 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 uh, to mention names, but you definitely see how this really, really, really mid core games using the simple, you know what? The simple mechanic of bridge race, right? Just putting, using like, you know, like this collection stuff and 
you know, I'm as a player, like I'm, I'm as a user, like watching this ad and 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 and, uh, and clicking, expecting to play a bridge race, but eventually I get to like super, super, super uh, strong and and, and deep uh, uh, game. Um, so it's not about the UA videos for a hybrid casual. It's about the ability to find the right creative. Which could be, by the way, could be you know like uh, have a lot of components. Like you know, like if we talk, uh, if we look um, on the uh, on the traffic jam, which is uh, by the way, it's not a creative. It's it's a, it's a gameplay, right? But it's not about bringing a hybrid casual gameplay into the creative. It's about to find the best setup in the creative. Uh, our like amazing uh, uh, UA team and our amazing uh, um, creative team. Uh, on the on the growth side means on the side where's the game published live games does a really really amazing job trying to find the best creative as we as a as a as a publishing team and as a as a growth team trying to find the best blend of monetization in the game they trying to find the best blend on the ua side it's about icons about like where you push what creative some creatives are playable some are banners some are interstitial static Whatever. So it's not about bringing a uh, specific subgenre into the creative. It's basically focusing on the creative that will be appealing and bring the best audiences. Uh, guys, uh, thank you so much. I have so many questions, but it's we run on the run out of the time. Um, thank you for joining Super Monday. It was awesome. It was a great experience, and I hope to see you really, really soon. We'll get to all of your answers, questions uh, in Instagram. Basically, yes, let's let's make it Instagram. Just go to our Instagram, follow, you can follow me as well. But if you can follow Instagram uh, as at Supersonic, ask your questions over there. Follow us there and catch even more insights because we definitely gonna be elaborating and pushing more insights and ideas um, as a post, all right? And uh, it's really, really nice to have like before, before everyone. Uh, and most important, go to our website, submit your games, Get the get the help of our experts and 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 go and and publish uh, your game with us. Supersonic.com. Everything is clear. Everything is 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 uh, um, is hyper casual. <laughs> Everything is hyper casual, simple over there. And uh, look uh, out soon for even more about hyper casual hybrid casual games. Cheers.